Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing really, really well and having a lovely day. Today's video, as you can probably tell by the title and the thumbnail, is going to be me reviewing and reading the five worst rated books on my Goodreads TBR. So this video has been a long time in the making, um, which I'll talk about in the moment, but first I wanted to say that I got the idea for this video from Chandler Ainsley. I will link her version below. Um, I'm sure you already know who she is and have already watched that video, but if not, you definitely should because it was so good and it just really made me want to do this. And I was just like so intrigued to do this video because I don't usually like reading books that I am like not interested in at all and don't think I'll like but these books are all books that at one point in time I liked the idea of enough to add to my TBR so yeah I was really intrigued to see what these books were and to start reading them and as I said this has been a long time in the making because I actually started reading the books of this video back in I think February or March and I actually filmed the entire thing in a vlog style video and after I edited it I just wasn't happy with it. I don't know exactly what it is that I didn't like about it but it just like I just wasn't happy with it at all and I didn't want to upload it and it was just kind of sat there on my computer and I kept thinking like I either need to refilm this video or just get rid of it and forget that it ever existed. So I have decided to film like a recap style rather than um, a vlog style. So I hope that is okay with you guys and let's get into the video. So I'm going to start by introducing the five different books to you and then I'll go into a review. So um, the five books, I'm going to go from the highest to the lowest rated on Goodreads. And I do have to say that none of these books were rated like a two star or anything, because usually I won't add things to my TBR unless they have like a decent average rating on Goodreads. So yeah, let's get into the video. So I've just moved over slightly so I can put the picture of the book next to me. This first book is Never Kiss a Stranger by Winter Renshaw. This is the first book in the Never series and it is currently rated a 3.76 on Goodreads. So this book is about a woman who has a random one night stand with a guy that she has, I think, meets on a dating app. And then she later realises that he is her new stepbrother. So I'm not someone who's really into the whole stepbrother thing because I actually have a stepbrother myself and I find it kind of, I don't know, weird to read about that kind of romance. Um, but for some reason this is on my TBR, I'm not really sure why. I've read one book by Winter Renshaw in the past, which was on the Read Me Romance podcast. It was like a novella and I did enjoy it. Um, so maybe that's why I added it, I can't exactly remember. But most of the reviews based on this one, it just said that there wasn't a great connection between the characters and that the plot just wasn't anything like special. It was just kind of superficial. And yeah, that was pretty much the criticism of this book. The second book that I read for this video is Her Baby, His Proposal by Teresa Carpenter. So this one currently has has a 3.69 rating yeah 3.69 rating on Goodreads and this is the third book in the Sullivan Sibling series and this book I have no idea how it came to be on my TBR I know that I own an ebook copy of it which is why it's on my TBR because every time I get an ebook uh, copy I like always put it on my TBR so I don't know how I came to own an ebook copy of it but I do it's not the kind of thing that I'd usually be drawn to based on the cover um, so yeah, I have this book and I decided to read it for this video. So this book is about a woman who finds out that she is pregnant and she enters into a marriage of convenience with a Navy SEAL so that she can have his like benefits and, you know, raise the baby uh, because she's in kind of a difficult situation. So that plot does actually kind of intrigue me a little bit, which is maybe why I added this to my TBR. Um, I like the idea of marriage of convenience stories, um, especially when there's like kids involved. I just think it's kind of cute. So yeah, that is possibly why this is on my TBR. I'm not really sure. So the reviews for this one aren't terrible they just kind of say that it's like kind of an average story nothing special and also that the formatting is super weird and I can say kind of spoiler for when I read this the formatting is very weird there were like gaps between each paragraph which made the book like feel a lot longer than it actually was because there weren't many words on each page it was like the weirdest thing so so yeah that is uh the like general consensus on this book the next book has a 3.62 rating on Goodreads and it is Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey. I'm sure so many of you have already read this book because it is very popular. I am a big Tessa Bailey fan. Um, I really like her just as a person. I listen to her podcast and I just really like her. So I had high hopes for this one going in. And this is a brother's best friend romance and also a fake dating romance. So the main criticisms for this book isn't really to do with the romance or the writing or anything. It's mostly to do with the main male character, Travis, who a lot of people thought was was like kind of unlikable and also for the way that he treated the main character Georgie. The next book is Blinded by Maya Hughes. This is the first 
book in the Breaking Free series and it is currently rated at a 3.56 on Goodreads. So this book is about a woman who has a fling with an upcoming movie star. Um, they then kind of like break up um, and there's a seven year time jump during which time she finds out that she is actually pregnant and starts raising her child kind of on her own. And then um, I think like the guy like finds out and comes back into their lives and that is the plot of the story. I have only read one book by Maya Hughes before which was The Perfect First and I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars so I was surprised to see this like lower rated on this list. Um, but yeah this one most people say it's mostly just the connection between the characters is really not great. The writing apparently isn't the best and also that there were some like inconsistencies within the story. And the last book that I'm going to be reading for this video is 99% Mine by Sally Thorne. This is currently rated at a 3.45 on Goodreads, which anything below a 3.5 is not good. And yeah, I feel like this is a very um, divisive book. I know a lot of people don't like this and I know I've seen some people say that they actually kind of enjoyed it. So this is a brother's best friend romance um, and I'll talk more about the plot once I go into the review section but um, a lot of people said that this just like was disappointing compared to The Hating Game which was her book that came before this one and I actually have a copy of The Hating Game. It is one of my favourite romances ever. I read this last year and I think it was my second favourite romance of the year. It was incredible. Um, so I did have high hopes for this one going in until I saw the reviews and then I was like kind of unsure whether I would like it or not. Apparently the main female character Darcy is super unlikable and that just kind of sets the tone for the entire book. If you don't like the main characters you're probably not going to enjoy the book quite as much. So that is the main criticism that people have about that one. And they are the five books that I read for this video. So one thing I did in the original version that I recorded before I started reading these books is I ranked them from what I thought would be my favourite to my least favourite with the intention of like comparing that to my final ranking of how much I actually enjoyed them. So even though I have already re read these books and know how I feel about them, I want to tell you my like original ranking here because I think it'll be kind of fun to see like how that changed from my final ranking and spoiler alert it was pretty different so I was not very good at guessing which ones I would like the most. So I will put the pictures on the screen now but the uh, book that I thought I was going to enjoy the most was Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey because I was thinking that I could look over the things that people said they didn't like to do with um, the way that the main character Travis was acting. I figured I thought that maybe that wouldn't bother me too much. Um, my number two spot I decided to go with Her Baby His Proposal because I was thinking that it kind of sounded just like an average book that's pretty short and that um, wouldn't really like leave a major impact so I didn't think I would be like majorly disappointed or upset by this one which was my kind of logic for thinking it would go second. In the third place slot I decided to go with Blinded because I felt like the plot intrigued me a little bit more than the plot of the uh, Never Kiss a Stranger um, and yeah I liked the idea of the kind of separation and then realizing that they had a child together I, that's a trope that I enjoy so yeah um, that was the one I decided that I thought I would like third most. Then after that I went for 99% mine because usually if a character is unlikable, which based on the reviews the character in this book is, um, I thought I would have trouble like getting into the story because I'm definitely a very character driven reader and if I can't empathise with a character I usually don't end up enjoying the story. So I decided that that would be like my second to least favourite. And then in last place I decided to go with Never Kiss a Stranger just because of the plot of the whole like stepbrother trope um, doesn't really appeal to me. So yes that was my original ranking of these books of the order which I thought I would enjoy the most and now I'm going to get into the reviews. So I'm going to review these books in the order that I read them. Um, so the first one that I decided to read was Her Baby His Proposal by Teresa Carpenter. So this book is about Brock and Jessie. Jessie finds out that she's pregnant um, and her like boyfriend who she was living with I think uh, completely like dumped her when she found that out and like kind of ran away with her money. So she is really screwed and I think she goes to work if I remember correctly and she ends up collapsing at work due to like exhaustion um, and she is like pretty early on in her pregnancy at this point and uh, the main male character Brock, he's a Navy SEAL who is like, I think he's just back from deployment. He happens to be at this cafe where she's working and kind of saves her when she collapses and takes her to hospital and like they get to know each other and he is like, well, you can come and stay with me and we can get married and then um, you can have my benefits while I am away uh, in the Navy. So that is the basic kind of plot of the book. And I actually really enjoyed this to start with. The writing was very cheesy, um, but I was just enjoying it. It was like a fun read. But then um, Brock kind of deployed and we had this very rushed period where she went through her pregnancy and it was just 
not the best. I feel like we didn't really get a lot of character development in that part and there was some letter writing like uh, while he was away and they would like write letters to each other but it was so brief and I ended up being so disappointed because you might know from some of my other videos that I really like that trope. Um, so that bit was like slightly disappointing. Then he ends up getting injured I think like not seriously but he ends up coming home and uh, at this point I believe she's had the baby. Does he arrive like as she has the baby? I can't remember but he comes back and um, they then have to go through this period that's very awkward because they are living together um, and they don't even know each other and there's like an infant there so that bit was actually really sweet I enjoyed that part of the book and I was really really loving it and then I do have to warn you that this is a clean book there are no sex scenes in this book it is fade to black which is fine with me I don't tend to go for those books I do prefer books that have like some physical element in them I have like no problem with reading sex scenes in books um but yeah, it was Fade to Black kind of disappointing because they had some great chemistry and there was like a great lead up to the moment and then it was like, oh, okay. Um, so yeah, it was okay. I didn't have like a major problem with that. But then we got to like the last third of the book, which like kind of ruined things for me. So the last third of the book was like primarily focused on Brock's family and him like reconnecting with his brothers who he is estranged from. So this was at the point in the book when I realised this is like part of a series and it just felt so unnecessary and honestly I did not care about Brock's family and I just didn't really want to read about this part. As I said he is estranged from his brothers and the reason behind that I will just let you know now it is a spoiler but the reason behind that is because a long time ago um I'm talking like 20 years ago Brock had a girlfriend and they were at like some kind of family gathering and the girlfriend desperately wanted to leave for some reason so Brock gets in the car and uh, tries to drive her home and they end up in a crash I think there's bad weather and the girlfriend dies and then for some reason Brock's brother gets really mad and instead of being, I guess, grateful or happy that his brother is alive and survived this crash, um, he blames Brock for the death of Brock's girlfriend. And like, I get why you would be upset that this girl has died, but like, it's not like she was your girlfriend, you know? I don't know. It just kind of seemed a little bit silly. And then it actually turns out that he wasn't mad at all. It was all just a big misunderstanding. Um, and that was stupid as well, because at least if you're going to have a conflict, like commit to it, don't make it a misunderstanding. Like 20 years of being estranged from your family over a misunderstanding. It was stupid. I didn't like that part of the book and it ended up just being kind of a disappointment. So there were like bright spots in this book. It wasn't all terrible but it definitely wasn't great and I think I ended up giving this two stars. The second book that I read was Never Kiss a Stranger by Winter Renshaw. So this one is about Addison and Wilder. Um, Addison is feeling in the mood for a one night stand so she goes on a dating app and decides to meet this random man that she has never met who turns out to be Wilder um, in a hotel and spend the night with him which she does. Then they kind of like decide that there's a connection between them and start like casually seeing each other or at least he tries to convince her to casually date him and then they realise that they are soon going to be step siblings. So this book was okay. I listened to this on audio and I just actually went to look at my Goodreads review to like refresh my memory and I'd actually put review to come and never written a review which is pretty rare for me. I usually review every book I read so I'm gonna have to try and like jog my memory on this one because it was a while ago that I read it but this was pretty good. I enjoyed listening to the audiobook. It was just kind of a passive listen. I didn't really love that the connection between Addison and Wilder was just like immediately like, oh my god, she's so amazing. I really like her. She's not like any other woman that I've been with. And I was like, but why do you feel that way? What is special about Addison? Like we never really got any of that. It was just like, he really liked her. And it's like, okay. The whole like stepbrother, step family thing didn't come in until quite late on in the book. Um, and it was like the main basis for the conflict because they decide they can't possibly be possibly be together because it would be a big scandal by the way this is kind of I think it's set in New York and they're not like celebrities but they're like relatively well known and like high powered in their careers that's also not my favorite I'm definitely more of like a small town dare I like that vibe a lot more than the big city thing so that wasn't my favorite but overall it wasn't a bad book it just wasn't great either so I think I gave this one three stars the third book that I read uh, was Blinded by Maya Hughes and this is about Alex who uh, has a one night stand with like an up and coming movie star who is like filming a movie uh, where she lives and his name is Gabe. They have this like very short fling and they really really like each other but then something dramatic happens and they end up breaking things off um, and then she finds out she is pregnant and we get a seven year time jump and Gabe then finds out that he has this child.
world um, and shows up back in their lives. So this one, um, the kind of before period, like before the time jump, um, was not good. I'm not gonna lie, the writing was just not great. The chemistry between them just didn't work at all and it was just not very good writing and I think it's a testament to how much Maya Hughes's writing has improved because I think this was one of her earlier books and after having read The Perfect First which was just so good this was yeah it's just not comparable she's definitely improved a lot and the first part I just didn't really enjoy I can't remember the exact reason they end up breaking things off uh, after they have like their little fling but I'm pretty sure it was some kind of like silly misunderstanding which I don't know it was okay it had to happen for the like plot of the story so I was like whatever um after the seven year time jump I started to like it more I do um like I did enjoy after he like came back into the kid's life how their bonding experience went I thought that was kind of sweet I feel like she maybe forgave him a little bit quickly um this wasn't terrible like after the time jump it was okay um they had better chemistry um after the seven years um and yeah, I don't really have much else to say. Again, I'm not a big fan of like celebrity, like famous people romances. So there was that element to it, which I could have done without. But at the same time, it wasn't bad. So again, I gave this one three stars. It was just kind of an average read. The fourth book that I read was 99% Mine by Sally Thorne. And oh my goodness, I have to say I have never experienced such a like 180 like flip in my opinion on a book after the first chapter. I read the first chapter of this book and I considered DNFing it. The character of Darcy is so unlikable in the first chapter. She comes across as just rude and condescending and arrogant to everyone that she meets. She has this very like, I'm not like other girls, I'm cool and I'm standoffish and I'm not going to put up with any of your crap. And it's like, okay, like, I don't like you at all. So that was my feelings after the first chapter. But then it did definitely improve as soon as our main male character entered the scene. So the plot of this book is that Darcy um, actually has a twin brother called Jamie and they have recently inherited the house of their grandmother who like recently passed away and they want to renovate the house. So they ask Tom, who is like their childhood friend, to come in and renovate the house because he, um, I think he's just started up his own renovation company. So um, while the renovations are going on, um, Darcy's brother isn't there. So it's like just her and Tom and they have this like great chemistry and connection and I really like their relationship. Tom was just so good. I really liked him. Um, he was just such a sweet character and she's like helping with the renovation and the book is mostly set within this like house and I like that. I like that it wasn't it didn't try to do too much. It was just a very simple story and I enjoyed it. I also actually really like the dynamics between Darcy, Tom and Jamie, Darcy's brother. I thought the dynamics between the three of them was like very well done and the way that the author kind of explained how um, Tom had always been this middle point between Darcy and Jamie and how they would like fight over him. I found that kind of interesting and, and overall I just actually really really enjoyed this one. Um, I ended up giving it four stars just because of that first chapter and even though I do think Darcy improved after that first chapter she still isn't going to go down as like my favorite uh main female character ever so yeah I gave it four stars definitely definitely not as good as the hating game and I did actually see a review saying that um it's almost like she tried to make Darcy the opposite of the main character in this book and I agree I think she tries to do that and it didn't exactly pay off but it definitely wasn't a bad book I do have a feeling that the reason this was so like rated so low is because people's expectations were just so high after the hating game that this was such a disappointment like if this was just a book in no way related to this um I don't think it would be rated as bad as it is because I don't think it's as bad as people say it is in my opinion it's just my opinion but yeah it's definitely it's no hating game but it also wasn't terrible so I would still recommend it I would just say like persevere the first few chapters you don't love Darcy but it does get better so I ended up enjoying this and yeah I gave it four stars. The final book that I read was Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey so I was actually really excited to read this one as I said this was the book that I put in my first place that I thought I was going to enjoy the most and I loved this. Um, the chemistry between Georgie and Travis was amazing. They enter into a fake relationship and Georgie is very much she, like she's the youngest child and she works as a um, clown for children's birthday parties and her family are very like like they treat her like the baby and kind of treat her like she's not a grown up and I enjoyed the kind of evolution that Georgie went through throughout the story um, and yeah the chemistry between her and Travis was 
so good. <laughs> um, it was just like so much fun to read about and I really enjoyed it. Um, I do have to say, I know that in Chandler Ainsley's review, I think she said it was one of her most disappointing books of the year and she didn't like the way that um, Travis calls Georgie baby girl and kind of infantilizes her in a way and I totally do see her point. I think that is an element of the book. On a personal level, it didn't bother me just because I have the kind of relationship with my boyfriend where we call each other stupid nicknames all the time and it doesn't necessarily mean that we don't like respect each other but I do think there is this like built-in element in the book that Travis is this like ex-baseball player who is so successful and just grown up and then you have Georgie who is not or, or like she's perceived as not to be and I do think there was kind of a power imbalance in that area so I do get the point about um, him like infantilizing her but I didn't really perceive it in that way and I ended up really loving this. I like the small town element. I liked all the other characters. I've since read Love Her or Lose Her, which is the second book in the series. It's actually just on my shelf up there and I loved that one. That was also amazing. Um, probably even better than this one, I think, but I definitely would recommend this and I ended up giving it five stars, probably more of a 4.5, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. So they are the reviews of the five books that I read for this video. Um, I am now gonna finish this by ranking them in the order that I enjoyed them and comparing them to my kind of estimate ranking. So my least favorite book was definitely Her Baby His Proposal. This just had a lot of issues for me and there were things that I did enjoy but overall it just was not great and I would not recommend this one. I gave it two stars so that was definitely my fifth and my least favourite book. Um, I actually originally in the original ranking said that would be Never Kiss a Stranger which I enjoyed quite a bit more than I thought I would. And I decided in fourth place to put Blinded by Maya Hughes. Never Kiss a Stranger and Blinded are kind of equal in my head. I gave them both three stars and neither of them are the most memorable or most incredible books that I've read, but I do think the writing for Never Kiss a Stranger was a little bit better, so I decided to put Blinded in fourth place. In third place, I decided to go for Never Kiss a Stranger, which I had actually originally put um, in my fifth place spot. I thought it was gonna be my least favorite, so it was definitely like a pleasant surprise in that aspect. Um, in second place, I put 99% Mine, which originally I didn't think I was going to like very much at all. Um, but actually, the unlikable main character didn't bother me as much as I thought it would. And there was definitely like a big U-turn after the first chapter. Um, and then my favourite was the one that I originally thought I was going to like the most, and that was Fixer Up. It was so good and I would definitely recommend this one. So that is everything for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's not exactly as exciting as a vlog, which this was originally intended to be, but I just wasn't happy with it and I'm not gonna, you know, put up content that I am not happy with. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Please comment down below if you've read any of these books and your thoughts on them. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye!